In today's episode, we take boring foam and turn it into epic fantasy for your tabletop wargaming. So for this stone bridge, the first thing I had to figure out was the shape. So I kind of just drew a rough outline on a piece of foam and cut out half of it so I could just mirror that exactly across onto another piece. From there, all I had to do was duplicate it by just simply tracing it and cutting it out and then copy the same thing over one more time. So after I had those duplicated, all I was left to do was figure out what I was going to do for the walkway. So for that, I just took some cardboard, making sure to keep it in the direction that it would roll easier with all those lines and grooves going in the opposite direction. Then cut out a three inch strip, about maybe 10 inches long. And from there, I was able to kind of dry fit it and then hot glue it into place. It'll have a little bit of hangover the way I did this, just because I wanted to make sure that there was enough to cover that entire base. So hot glue that in place, making sure that it lines up with that bottom of the arch of the bridge and matching the same thing onto the other side. Now after that hot glue dried, all that was left was just to cut off that excess flap and figure out how I was gonna get a better slope through the center there. So to do that, I just kept the same, that excess cut off of that three inch piece and just duplicated that just to make sure it was long enough to go down to the ends and kind of curve out that arch. That way you can actually set stuff on top of this bridge and complete the look a little bit more naturally. Lots of ways you could do this if you wanted to. You could also use popsicle sticks or even later on if you wanted to go through and just brick all that to get more of a stone steps through there. But I really like the idea of a pathway that was kind of full of rocks and texture and sand and kind of an abandoned and overgrown type of look to the end of it. Now once those were in place, I left a little bit of a gap there at the top. So all I did was take a little bit of a strip of cardboard and just simply hot glue that in place right in there just so I wouldn't have to fill in as with the putty as much later on. So once that was dry, it was onto the fun part, which was chopping up a whole bunch of bricks, texturing them and hot gluing them in place. So for these bricks, I didn't really have an exact way of doing it, just kind of eyeballed it and spent about an hour, one night, just chopping up a whole bunch of them. I do personally like this method a lot more than just cutting the texture of bricks into foam. I think it looks a lot more natural and especially in the case that I like to use it for a bit more of a weathered look to it or a kind of a rundown made look. So it actually glues in place. I just started on the ends here and made sure to get the corners fitted up correctly, making sure that they overlapped and all the bricks looked right. So to do that, all I did was cut these bricks along that inside just to match up with the, to give the next brick in place room to overlap properly. And then after that was done, all I had to do was go down the sides and fill in the rest with bricks. So this was a pretty long process, but just listen to a podcast or listen to some music or something and it really goes by pretty quick. And I definitely like the look of it a lot more once you get to the end. So for the inside of it, I instead of just leaving it flat along the bottom, I decided to curve it up there around the cardboard. And then I could also use the top of that as a way to use as a guide to cut out those exterior bricks. Now I knew that I wanted to put some capstones on top of this once it was all done and these walls were finished so I wasn't too worried about having it perfectly lined up as long as all the gaps were filled with brick. So same thing with the bottom underneath that arch was just take my hobby knife and follow that guide right along there to get a nice clean cut. So to do these arches underneath all I did was take some bricks and then just slowly cut them into place as I went for the next one to fit in properly. There's definitely a lot of different ways you could do this if you wanted to even do this method. Um, but I found this was a pretty simple method that also broke up the typical striations of all those bricks that makes it look, I think, a little bit more handmade and not so professional and clean. But definitely take some artistic liberty with this step if you like or change it up entirely, whatever you prefer and whatever matches your game style and build style. But by the time this was done, I was pretty happy with the final result and definitely something that I will work on to improve in future projects, but I'm also pretty happy with how it turned out in this one. So once that was all done and clean and both walls were finished, all I had to do was go through and put on the bricks for the bottom of this arch. I found that to be a pretty easy method and I think it looked pretty good at the end, but what I wanted to make sure I did was make sure that those bricks on the bottom there lined up with the ground level so when it sat on the table it was flat and there were no gaps showing. So all in all, that was the brickwork pretty much done. All that was left to do at this point was to get the capstones in place. So to do that, I just cut out a square piece of foam that looked like it would be about the right width and cut out a square, then test fit it just to make sure that there was a little bit of an overlap, cut out enough to cover that whole bridge up and threw them into the tumbler to get some texture on there. You can also use aluminum foil or just pressing the stones into these 
Uh, but I found this method worked pretty good, especially for just this few and for this larger pieces, added a nice texture there. Then while the glue was still setting, all I did was make sure that the spacing was figured out correctly and it looked appropriate. So then from there, I'm gonna just take the spackling, cover up that ground layer where the dirt and rock and sand would be later on, but also use that spackling to fill in all of the, those openings in between those capstones just to act as a grout. Um, this method I thought worked really well, especially in the end. It kind of adds a bit of a stone texture to the top of those, um, but also just wiping off the edges there just to keep it as flat as possible and maintain some of that shape on there before. So once that dried, I just went over it, kind of knocked down the corners and smoothed it out a little bit and moved on to the Mod Podge just to make sure that it had a nice good seal on it. Uh, then from there, primed it black and was able to put the glue down there and took some of this small stone and just poured that mostly in the corners where it could get kind of kicked up and as people traveled this bridge back and forth and then from there I was able to just take that sand and pour that right on top and just use that same glue to just hold everything in place and create a nice uniform ground level. Now once that was all in place I kind of just moved it around and dusted it to make sure that there was no just access stacked up anywhere but also just to knock it off and make sure all of the gaps and glue was covered. After that, I just took some of the, my PVA glue and water and alcohol mix and sprayed that all over it to seal it in. And then from there, it was time to prime it and start painting. So for that, I just took my standard method of overbrushing with kind of a neutral gray just over all of the stonework and then going through with lighter and lighter grays up to white, just dry brushing, making sure to really grab those corners and edges as highlight spots, anywhere the light might catch it, and also leaving all those dark corners somewhat shaded but just being real liberal not real precise with it letting the brush catch where it's going to catch and I think it ends up giving it a real nice look. Once all the stone texture and painting was done all that was left to do was do the ground so for that I just took some burnt umber gave it a nice thick coat of that and then once that had dried taken some lighter shades of burnt umber mixed with some yellow and just was really particular about where that was catching trying to get the stones mostly and also some of that ground texture now from there i just took one of my brown washes and cut the entire thing with it to make it look a little bit more older and weathered and let that dry by the time it was done i was pretty happy with that look but in my opinion there's one more step to do before we call this done and that is to add the foliage so to do that, all I did was take some PVA glue and some of this coarse blocking and then just take one of my brushes and start applying that just anywhere that the water is going to be really pooling up. So along the arch there and along the base of the bridge, but also kind of in between the cracks of the bricks on top of the ones that might stick out and underneath that guardrail. So once that was drawn, it was time to call this project complete. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out and I probably only spent about six hours building it. So I was really happy for those results. But if you enjoyed this, I'd love to hear what you have to think about it. And thanks for watching. Until next time, keep crafting, keep learning, and keep believing in yourself. Thank you.